Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you my round 8 game from Hvar and also my last game because I didn't play in the last round which was played the following morning. So I, I faced again a, a strong young player and I prepared a lot uh, with Kasparov's games because I wanted to play something interesting, something aggressive and uh, uncompromising basically. So I started pawn e4, uh, he played e6, d4, d5, uh, knight to d2, the Tarash French and he'd already gone into the Rubinstein in one game uh, in the tournament so I knew that it was a possibility and I was preparing a line Kasparov played in the 80s and 90s. So d4, knight e4, knight d7, knight f3, knight gf6 and now instead of playing a normal knight takes f6 or bishop to d3, which are the two most common moves, I played bishop to g5, pinning the knight. And now there are a couple of options, you can play h6, the bishop just retreats, uh, it, it could also take, uh, or you can just take on, on f6 first and then retreat. Uh, but my opponent played bishop to e7 and now the knight is threatened, so knight takes f6. And the most interesting way to play this uh, which I was hoping for was bishop takes and then you follow that up with h4 and these positions get very very interesting for example castles bishop to d3 c5 uh, queen e2 and if cd4 you can simply ignore that go queen e4 and these are lines that well Kasparov played this against Shirov, against Anand. Uh, he didn't win all of his games, but he always had promising attacking positions. But in this position, my opponent recaptured with the knight, which I think is safer. It doesn't resolve the issue of this bishop being annoying on g5, but okay. Uh, bishop to d3, and your attacking setup is to castle king side and to threaten stuff on this diagonal and on this diagonal. My opponent castled and I played queen to e2. Now, if he does nothing, uh, I have annoying threats. Uh, I can play bishop f6 and queen e4. If he, for example, if he plays a stupid move like bishop to d7, then I can take, takes, and queen e4. And this is a double attack. He could win the b2 pawn back, but I'm going to pick up a7 and this should already be good for me. So the, the main <coughs> move here, which he knew and he played is c5. No need supporting my center, I can just take the pawn, he gets it back with check, but I get to play c3, which is a useful move. Queen takes c5 and now castles. And I'm not sure at which point, but somewhere here, or he was thinking for a long time on each turn, so he, he knew what he was doing, he ended up playing the best moves, but he, I don't think he was too familiar with the position. Here he played bishop to d7, which is okay. Uh, a better move is, is rook to d8, preparing uh, bishop to d7 to make sure you can have bishop e8. For example, if, if rook to d8 here, I can simply start with rook a to d1, and if bishop to d7, there are 95 ideas. Now, if if black isn't careful, if he plays a bad move like bishop to c6, there is knight f7, of course, and well, there's trouble on e6. I could also start rook e1, just, just reinforce the idea. But he played bishop d7 straight away, which, which is fine. But it basically loses the bishop pair because bishop e8 is a bad move if a rook is stuck on f8, so I played knight e5. Uh, I don't think he can play something like bishop to a4. I don't think that makes too much sense. Uh, because again, I could be threatening just bishop takes and bishop takes and queen e4. Uh, after, for example, b3 and, and some exchanges. So he played bishop c6 and they took the bishop. He took back with the queen. Now. I believe white should hold a slight edge in this position simply because white has the bishop pair. Uh, also, well, there are no more tricks on, on, on the diagonals because the queen is covering it now, but still, I'm the first one to occupy the files and, and my position should be okay. I played rook ad1, he played rook ad8, uh, I played rook fe1, 
I didn't think there was any use doubling my uh, my rooks on the on the D file because I don't think I had the time to do that uh, because he always has ideas with knight uh, with knight D5. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure, so I played rook F1, just improving my rook. He played B6. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what the use is uh, unless he wants to pre prevent bishop to b5, which could be annoying if he wants to double himself with rook d7. Well, this, yeah, excuse me, I, I wanted to say, he, he, I think he should have played a6 to prevent bishop b5, not, not b6. Uh, it saves the pawn all the same, but prevents bishop b5. But b6 is okay, not that it's a bad move. I played h3 in some positions, uh, just avoiding stuff like this uh, and also giving my king some luft. I wanted to see what he was going to do with his rooks. For the moment, uh, rook e8, for example, doesn't lose the exchange because I, I think he can simply take on d1. Well, actually... Wait, let, let's just check this. Yeah, okay, it it does lose the exchange. Okay, so yeah, he should he should have played a6. There are no tricks. I, I can play bishop b5. But in this position, he played knight d5. And, well, there are some thing that, things that worry me here. Uh, one of them is obviously knight to f4. For example, if I, if I take on e7, then, then knight f4. Uh, not that it's good, but maybe it could be good and here i have two two moves two ideas uh, at this point i think i had about 45 minutes on the clock he had less than 20 i want to say uh, and i can either play queen e4 or i can play queen h5 i chose the wrong move because uh, i'd misjudged the weaknesses he would have to create after queen e4 uh, and one line after queen e4 i just couldn't calculate correctly uh, not, not really that i couldn't calculate it correctly i couldn't see the advantages of one of his pieces the knight on d5 being bad so queen e4 is a much better move let me show you why well there are two defenses f5 and g6 f5 is good and if he plays f5, then it's obvious that white is better. There is a pawn on e6 that is going to be a weakness for the rest of the game. For example, queen h4, bishop g5, queen g5, let's say rook d6, defending in advance. I can simply transfer my bishop to this diagonal and start doubling my rooks. Uh, let's say h6, queen h4, rook e8, for example, bishop b3. If knight f6, then... I mean... That there is a weakness, and white is better for the rest of the game, unless e5 can be played comfortably. But what worried me was g6 in this position, where I would have played bishop h6, rook f8, and now the line I was calculating uh, after this was c4, which is correct, knight b4, which is correct, a3, which is correct, and queen e4, bishop e4, rook d1, rook d1, and he has to play knight a6. And I thought I had no advantage here. But the thing is, my advantage is tremendous. The knight is completely offside. I get to play bishop c6. He basically is forced to play uh, rook to d8. If he plays rook to c8, uh, I can play bishop b7. If he plays rook to, uh, rook to b8, I, I can play bishop uh, to, to f4. So this is basically forced. I take, takes, and I'll simply b4. And this knight being offside is a huge deal. My bishops are completely dominating his position. I'm not saying it e it's easy to win, but I just thought I couldn't win it. I, I, I thought he had a good position. So I went for queen h5. And this doesn't give him the option to play uh, f5. Uh, or he doesn't have to play f5, he can, he can just play g6 with tempo. Uh, and this is practically a very bad, bad idea, a very bad move. 
if his options are f5, which I know is bad, and g6, which I know is okay, and after queen h5, g6 is the only option, then why allow it if I know it's okay for him? So I should have just played uh, queen to e4. Okay, so g6. Now, bishop e7 is impossible, of course. Queen h4 or queen g4 are forced. Takes, takes. And I thought I would have some counterplay with my h-pawn, which is correct. But it's not enough. Queen c7, I played bishop c2. Uh, I wanted to put my bishop on a better diagonal and also not allow any tricks uh, with uh, queen f4. If he plays queen f4 here, of course, I have uh, rook to d5. So this prevents a queen exchange and puts the bishop on a better square. Uh, he played knight e7, I played h4, and he just started trading everything off. So takes, takes, and rook d8, I basically have to take. Takes, takes. And now h5. For the moment, his knight is pinned to the queen. His only move is knight c6, I think. Uh, and now I ended up trading, trading queens. I couldn't see a better move. When I look at the position again, and I'm going to turn on the engine. The engine says this is equal. Fine. Uh, Queen takes should be the best move, but that doesn't matter. The differences are minute and they almost don't exist. It's all zeros. But keeping the queens on the board would have given me better practical chances, of course. The thing is, in this position, I'm covering all three squares. So he doesn't have good entry points. So as long as my queen stays on this diagonal, I don't see a way for him to make progress. Uh, that being said, if I play something like queen f4, he can easily get the knight back into the game. And... I don't think h6 is enough. I think eventually I lose the pawn after queen f8 and knight f5. I'm going to have to take and then it's all zeros. So I took the queen. He took back with the knight. I took the pawn. Takes, takes. Okay, and this has to be the worst endgame I ever played. Uh, this, I mean, you can definitely learn from it. But I didn't use the knowledge I already have. So obviously, bishop versus knight end games can go either way, depending on the pawn structure and when the pawn, where the pawns are. Usually, I prefer having the knight, because once you can fix the pawn structure, the knight becomes a monster. For the moment, the pawn structure on both sides of the board is fluid. So there are two things I have to do. And one thing I could do, which I shouldn't do, which I did. Uh, the two things I have to do. One of them is improve my king. The other one is blockade his majority with f4. So f4 has to be a good move. If he only has two pawns against one, then I can safely advance my majority on the, on the queen side. Also, improving my king has to be priority number one. If my king gets to a6, the game is over because my bishop can sacrifice itself for, for, for the last pawn. What I did in the game was I tried to restrain his knight and gave him two tempi in the process. So I played bishop e4, he played f5, and I played bishop a8. And this is simply a bad idea. Now he plays e5. I don't have f4 anymore. He's threatening to restrain my bishop more so than his knight is restrained. And his king is faster than mine. I'm going to show you what happened in the game a bit later. So what I should have done is either f4, which is straightforward, and then moving the king up, or probably just king f1. And let's say f5, king e2, king f7, king to d3, king to e7, king to c4. At this point, he has to play a6. I go f4, king d6, and now I could go king d4, trying to prevent e5, but he has knight c6. And this should be about equal. I mean, I'm no, not saying from the start that I have any advantage. I have no advantage. I'm saying that it's easier to play with the knight, and I have preferred that. Uh, so in this position, something like king to d4, knight c6, king to e3, e5, g3 should be equal. Uh, I should say that e4 is a bad move, should not be played, because his knight is then going to have very, very little squares 
to to maneuver around the only good square is probably f6 but i can simply cover uh, g4 with with bishop d1 uh, so he either has to keep the tension or or he has to take once he takes he has no advantage on the king side at all so this would have been roughly level but i played bishop e4 f5 bishop a8 e5 king f1 this is okay king f7 king e2 king e7 king d3 king d6 and in this position i played the losing blunder there is only one way to uh, to save this position it's still perfectly equal uh, but there is only one way to keep it equal you can pause the video if you want i think it's very instructive uh, Okay, so I ended up playing bishop, uh, I ended up playing king to c4, advancing my king. And this loses fairly simply uh, to e4. After e4, I play king d4, he plays knight e6, I have to go back, and he plays king e5. And this is over. This is, the, there is nothing for me here. He's just going to advance his pawns, create a best pawn, and make a queen. My bishop cannot do anything about it. What I should have done is f3, preventing e4. And after f3, there really isn't a way for him to make progress. He can try knight e6, I just go g4. For example, knight c5 check, king to d2, uh, I don't know. He can play b5, I can play b3, I can play a5. Uh, I can even exchange on f5 if he tries or, or maybe just continue b4, a b4, c b4, knight to d7. It, it should be equal. There, there is no way for him to make progress after f3 once I trade one of the pawns. But I played king c4, and he didn't play e4 straight away. He played knight e6, which again gives me the chance to play f3 and save my position. Again, I didn't play f3. Here, if he tries something like knight f4, then I can go g3, or, excuse me, knight c5 or knight f4. Uh, I can go g3, or after knight c5, I can go g3 as well. Uh, g3 here, maybe knight e2, g4. Again, one of the pawns is getting traded off, and it should be over. Uh, again, I, I didn't see f3, which would have held the balance. I, I thought... It best to keep my pawns here and just wait for him to overextend, give up the, the d4 square, which is a huge mistake. I played bishop f3, giving him e4 with tempo, and here all options are losing. Uh, when, when he played e4, I almost resigned. Uh, I felt like resigning, but... I decided to play on for a couple of more moves. This, this is dead lost, and I had just miscalculated the move I ended up playing. I had to play it anyway, because both bishop e2 and bishop d1 lose by force. If I go bishop e2, he goes knight f4, I go bishop f1, and he goes king e5. And that's it. I can try a4, but now g5, let's say b4, uh, simply knight to d5, and... If I try g3 now to prevent him from moving, he can just play e3. Which I can cannot take because he forks my stuff. So I have to play f3 and... Yeah, that, that's it. I, I don't think there are any more moves to be played here. Uh, and I saw that that loses, so I ended up playing bishop to d1, allowing knight f4. Uh, threatening uh, both knight d3 and knight g2 and this may be even simpler but i was hoping he would take the b2 pawn and give me some counterplay so g3 knight d3 bishop e2 uh, if he takes the b2 pawn then i have some chances because i can restrict the knight of course uh, but yeah he he took on f2 and and that's it so this is how the game ended I played out of inertia for the last couple of moves. Here I, I, I resigned. Uh, what can I say about this endgame? I mean, <clears throat> I shouldn't be losing endgames like this. 
I had more time on the clock. Uh, he was, I think when we started the end game, he had about eight minutes left or six minutes left. So I was definitely the one who rushed. I didn't concentrate. I didn't think about the end game schematically. I didn't think about holding or keeping equality. I thought about trying to win, which is a stupid idea. And when you look at this position, position objectively, it's a draw and it's easier to play for black. So this was both a psychological error and complete misunderstanding of the position. Uh, it's not that I don't know that you should bring your king forward, that you should blockade your opponent's majority. I just try to restrain the knight, which is an insane idea given that it loses to Tempe. So a bad end to the tournament, but there are going to be more bad tournaments and I have to learn how to deal with it much better. I didn't feel well and I need to be able to feel better even if the tournament is going badly and even if I have stuff on the side that's troubling me and I think that's why this is a good experience nevertheless. Congratulations to my opponent, he played a great tournament, he's a great player and since he was unfamiliar with the position uh, or not as familiar as me, he, he played it really well. Uh, he avoided all the traps and he outplayed me in the end game like a boss. I just looked like a complete fool. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you got something from this. Don't lose end games which are drawn because of impatience and uh, arrogance, I'm going to say. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.